Well, hey there, chemistry team, chemistry coach coming at you. Let's put it all together now. We spent so many videos looking at unit cells and closest packing structures and FCC and BCC and blah, 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 HCP and all this fun stuff, right? So what we're going to do, and this has been my ultimate goal for this entire uh, segment of solids, is to be able to take this information from a known unit. If we know the unit cell, um, when, and uh, from x-ray diffraction, we can get the atomic radius. We can calculate, actually estimate the density of a metallic solid. We could do ionic ones as well, but we're going to focus just on metallic ones. And then compare that to experimental values, right? Or we could twist it around backwards and calculate atomic radius. So here's the two types of problems we're going to be running into for solids, right? Given unit cell information, is it FCC, HCP, body center, cubic, those kinds of things. One, like I just mentioned, calculate the density, provided what unit cell it is, right? And the atomic radius, usually from X-ray diffraction data. Given those, we can actually calculate the density, typically in grams per centimeters cubed. And I'll show you the steps on doing that. Pretty straightforward, actually. Or I can flip it around, which I think is a little bit tougher, but still doable. Well, calculate the atomic radius. Say we don't have that information, but we do know we could take the experimental density, right? Say we have the experimental density and we know what type of unit cell it is. We should be able to estimate the atomic radius. Hey, let's do what there's really nothing new here, right? We've already learned everything it takes to be able to do these types of calculations. So let's do one example of each to, sh to show you the process. And once you know the process, you're like, hey, you know, when you come to a test, you're like, step one, step two, step three, done. Step one, step two, step three, done. Boop, off you go to the races. And this just takes practice, practice, practice. Keep doing them. Do a whole bunch of those till you vomit. Do a whole bunch of those till you vomit. So that way, when you're on the test, you don't vomit. <laughs> right? That's what I did in track. Practice till you puke so that when it's an actual championship match or, you know, I'm running, you know, like especially 400 meter. I was a 400 meter dash, you know, state level runner. Man. I ran so many 400s in practice, I'd be heathen, okay? And I tried as hard as I could in practice so that when it came to an actual competitive race, right, that seemed relatively simple compared to practice. They're like, wow, I only have to run one 400-meter dash, not 10 or 15 or 20, yay, <laughs> right? Practice hard, 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 and then everything else falls into place. All right. Let's do the first one, calculating the solid density provided the unit cell and atomic radius. Ready for the first example and just the steps, and then we'll go through the steps together. Once you know how to approach it, not too tough, just basic math. All right, number one, I can give you any metallic element, right? As long as it's got a unit cell structure that's under the cubic category, right, that we're going to be doing. I'm not going to give you some rhombohedric one or something, <laughs> or some weird one. So if europium has a body-centered cubic, you got to know what BCC stands for, a uh, unit cell, and the atomic radius is 199 picometers, right, determined from X-ray diffraction. So you got your two things. You got the type of unit cell and you got the atomic radius. What's the density of europium? And typically solids will be in grams per centimeters cubed. If the units aren't specified in there, technically you could use any mass you could do pounds, you could do any volume, you could do pounds per per gallon. I mean, you could, <laughs> you technically could do any one you want, but do grams per centimeters cubed. That's assumed, right? Here's the steps, right? Don't necessarily have to be in this order, right? But ultimately, density is mass over volume. We need the mass, we need the volume. So you could do the volume first and the mass second. It doesn't really matter. Um, but this fourth step has to be fourth, but you could do two and three and then one doesn't matter. This is just what I like to do. I like to go easy as the hardest. Right? So number one, I'm going to determine the mass. Okay, and That's from the number of atoms. So take a look at the unit cell and determine how many atoms there are. Simple cubic's one, body center cubic's two, face center cubic is four. <laughs> I almost did three. Uh, and we're not going to be doing hexagonal close to spec. All right. Uh, so once you know the number of atoms, you can convert that to grams using, using Avogadro's number and the molar mass of that particular element. So you got the grams. Right? It's going to be a very small number, right? Tiny little unit cell. Step two. Ultimately, we're after the volume, but before we can do that, we need to know how the atomic radius relates to the edge length L. Right? We need that from the Pythagorean theorem, and that was different for simple cubic 
uh, face-centered cubic and body-centered cubic. And you can either memorize those or you can just redo them doing the Pythagorean theorem over again. I will not provide you those. Yeah. So it's up to you on that one. I'd like to be able to just figure it out so you have to memorize it. And once you know that, in step three, we can calculate the volume. Right? Volume is the edge length cubed. So get the edge length in terms of the atomic radius, plug that in for L, cube it, you're off to the races. And then step four, you know the mass from step one, you know the volume from step three, take the mass divided by the volume. You're done. Track your uncertainty, and we're good to go. So go ahead to give it a shot, right? Don't sit there and just what, do it yourself and see if you match what I get on the board. I don't think I'll be able to get all of this on one board. Maybe. If not, we'll do two boards. Let's do the mass first. Step one and two I got on one board. Here we go. All right, step one, which I think is the easiest, take the unit cell. Right? This happens to be body center cubic, which is two atoms. Face center cubic would be four, right? Uh, and simple cubic would be one. So you just take the number of atoms, which is an exact number, uh, convert atoms to moles by dividing by Avogadro's numbers, right? So you can see the units cancel out. So europium atoms cancel out, back to, you know, first semester general chemistry, dimensional analysis. And then we got moles, and then we just use the molar mass of europium right there, right? So 151.964, you see that? Boop! And that'll cancel out moles, so multiply by that atomic mass. Uh, that's exact. Avogadro's number is not an exact number. It's 6.022 something something something. I just truncated it there, so... Uh, even though our atomic mass is six sig figs, we're stuck with four because um, I gave you kind of a wimpy Avogadro's number. So we'll go to four significant digits here. So I get five. So these two atoms, it's going to be pretty light. What's the mass of two atoms? 5.04696 times 10 to the minus 22 grams of europium. Good to four significant figures. So I'm going to carry that intermediate or non-rounded value. I'm not going to round that because I didn't ask for the mass in the problem. What did I ask for? the density. So I'm not going to round anything until I calculate the density, right? Then I'll get the intermediate value and then I will round that and box that. So this is just an intermediate step. All right, that's step one. It's the same for all of them. The only difference would be the number of atoms based on the unit cell and the atomic mass based on whatever metallic element that is. All right, step two. Now we got to relate R to L. You may have just memorized 4R is L square root of 3. That's okay. I prefer you to be able to do it. So this is body-centered cubic. I didn't draw the whole thing, but I drew that little right triangle that goes from the edge length in front across the face diagonal on the right-hand side, and then the hypotenuse goes across the body diagonal from the front bottom corner to the top back right corner body diagonal, right? And so this uh, A, so we got A, B, and C, right, from the right triangle. So A was the edge length. B is the face diagonal, which was L square root of 2, the edge length times the square root of 2, which we use the Pythagorean theorem to figure out, which I didn't do on this one. Uh, and then the body diagonal was um, C was L square root of 3, if you do the Pythagorean theorem. Remember, you got to do that twice for body center cubic. Uh, I didn't redo it. You can just go check the video out. And across the body diagonal is where the atoms touch, right? So you get the full atom in the body, which is two of the radius, plus this portion of the one in the front corner and the back corner. So you get one, two, three, four atomic radius across the body diagonal. Therefore, four times the atomic radius must equal the body diagonal, which is the edge length times the square root of three. So if we isolate the edge length, the edge length would be four times the atomic radius divided by the square root of three. Okay? And again, you're going to just memorize that and skip all that stuff. It's up to you, right, on an exam. Homework, I'd like to see that, but an exam, if you're able to memorize it, great. But if you forget, you could always solve for it. But I will not be providing this in my class on exams. All right. So let's do steps three and four now. You can do it. Let's polish it off. Step three, let's calculate the volume. To get the volume, we need the edge length, and then we're going to cube it. So the edge length was four times the atomic radius over the square root of three. So take four times the atomic radius provided from x-ray diffraction, 199 picometers. That'll be different based on the metallic element. Divide that by the square root of three. Four and the square root of three are constants, right? So it will be limited to three sig figs from the atomic radius. So I get 459.57 picometers, good to three sig figs. That would be the edge length. Now, if you wanted to include that back in step two, once you get that ratio, you can just calculate the edge length. That's fine. You can do that step through step three. I don't care. It all merges together. 
But now we've got the edge length of pico meter, picometers. We need the volume in centimeters cubed, right? So let's take the edge length cubed. So take 459.57 picometers and cube it. And I'm going to go ahead and convert that to centimeters cubed now. And you can do that later if you wanted to. You could do it down here or up here. It doesn't matter. I just like to get it done here. So there's 1 times 10 to the 12th or 1 trillion picometers per meter. I'm going to cube that. And then there's 100 centimeters per meter. I'll cube that. Going picometers to centimeters is not intuitively obvious to me. So I always like to go to the base unit meters first. And then so I'll go from the picometers to the base unit meters because I know it's 10 to the 12th. And then I'll go meters to centimeters because I know it's 100 centimeters per meter. Remember to cube each term and then those units cancel out. So the picometers cubed cancel, meters cubed cancel, leaving you with centimeters cubed. Right? That's where most people screw up. They forget to cube the 1 times 10 to the 12th. And they forget to cube the 100, and they forget, or they forget to cube the 459.57. Limited because these metric conversions are exact. We're limited to three sig figs, so I get 9.7063 times 10 to the minus 23rd centimeters cubed. That's a tiny little unit cell, itty bitty. Good to three sig figs. Got my mass in grams, got my volume in centimeters cubed. Step four is a piece of cake, right? Density is mass over volume. So take the mass from step one that we calculated. Take the volume from step three that we calculated. We got four sig figs in the mass, three sig figs in the volume. We're doing division, so we're limited by a few sig figs. So I get 5.1996 grams per centimeters cubed. Good to three significant figures limited by the volume there. Well, that's obviously closer to 5.20 than it is to 5.19. So I'm going to round that up to 5.20 grams per centimeters cubed. Need to keep that trailing zero for the third significant figure. And then we can check that with experimental densities, right? It's usually pretty close. Nice, huh? Not too bad. And then you can, you can fluff this in slightly different ways. You can do the conversion to centimeters cubed down here. You can calculate the edge length up in step two. It's up to you, it doesn't matter. But ultimately, I don't round it until the very, very end because you might incur rounding error. So let's do the exact same type of problem, but let's flip it backwards, the second type of problem where I give you the density and the type of unit cell. Let's do a different one. Let's, we just did body center cubic, so let's do a face center cubic on the next one. So let's give you a face center cubic unit cell, give you the element, and I'll tell you the density. I'll give you the density, and then we'll have to solve for the atomic radius. Ooh. <laughs> Here is our second type of problem where we're going to solve for the atomic radius. So let's take thorium, for example. Thor has a density of 11.7 grams per centimeter cubed, or you could look that up in a table or something. And an FCC, or face center cubic unit cell, what is the atomic radius? Typically, those are in picometers. Back in my day, it was Armstrong's, the capital A with a little circle over the top, like an angel, Wee, like the Anaheim Angels almost. Um, the, the International Union of Pure and Applied Chemistry is trying to get away from Armstrong's. People love, see, a lot of people say Angstrom's, but I think it's the Armstrong's. We'll stick with picometers because most tables today are in picometer. So step one, exactly the same step as the other kind of problem. Determine the number of atoms in that unit cell. In this case, it's an FCC unit cell. Uh, and then convert that to mass in grams. Exactly like we did. So step one's the same in every single time of pro type of problem. So mass, I always like to start with. But now it gets weird. Now step two, we're going to use that density provided as a conversion factor to convert. Remember, density can convert mass to volume or volume to mass. In this case, we know the mass. We want the volume. So take the mass, use the density to convert that to a volume, and that would be in centimeters cubed, and then you can convert that to picometers cubed. Technically, I guess you could do that in step three, the conversion from centimeters to picometers is up to you. But I like to convert that volume to picometers cubed in step two. Right? So use the density as a conversion factor. Once you have that, we can go to step three. You know the volume is the edge length cubed, right? Well, if you know the volume, you can then just take the cubed root of that or raise it to the one-third power to get the edge length in picometers. Now, if you left it in centimeters in step two, then you'd have the edge length in centimeters. You can convert it to picometers at that point. I don't care. Once we have the edge length, then in step four, take the unit cell, SEC, BCC, simple cubic, relate the edge length to R based on the Pythagorean theorem and all that fun stuff, right? And once you have that, isolate the variable R in terms of L, you know L, plug it in, and you've got the atomic radius in picometers. Woo! 
So see if you can do it. Here's your steps, four steps for both kinds of problems. Go ahead and do it and see if you can get the atomic radius of thorium in picometers and get what I get. So let's do steps one and two on the first board, steps three and four on the second board. See what we get and then we'll done with this video. There's really not too many other kinds of problems we could do. To get what I got for steps one and two, step one should look familiar, right? So we've got an FCC unit cell, four atoms, right? You've got the, the corners, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight times one AP, each is one, plus the six faces times a half is three. Three plus one is four. You'll probably just have them memorized, right? So take the four atoms of thorium. That's an exact number, correct? Divide that by Avogadro's number, 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd. Atoms cancel out. Dimensional analysis per mole. That's going to limit us to four sig figs again. And then look up the uh, atomic mass of Thor. Where is thorium anyway? Right there. That's what Thor is. Right? So what's that? 232.0381 grams. Oh, I don't have my glasses. Grams per mole. That's one, two, three, four, five. That's seven sig figs. So we'd be limited by Avogadro's number again. Uh, and then moles cancels out. Boop. So to four sig figs, I get a mass of 1.54126 times 10 to the minus 21 grams of thorium. Again, that's only four. That's a mass of four atoms of thorium. It's going to be a very small number. So be familiar. So I see a lot of students on exams, they'll do something weird, and they'll get like some number times 10 to the 15th grams. I'm like, that seems a little heavy for four atoms. Right, so so use common sense. Or if you get a density at the end, you know, like the other one of the you know, three times ten to the minus fifteenth grams per centimeter cubed. What? <laughs> that's that's way. You know, metals are probably going to be greater, you know, than than one typically, because most metals will sink um, unless it reacts with water. So so use some common sense in your numbers. The mass and the volumes are going to be really tiny, tiny numbers. Um, depending on the units, right? But obviously with grams, that's going to be really really tiny tiny all right so what do we got here um 1.54126 times 10 minus 24th grams okay now step two let's get the volume in picometers cubed now this will probably be a bit bigger centimeters cubed is going to be small because the centimeter cubed is a milliliter um, so you can do this in centimeters cubed or you can do it in picometers cubed it doesn't matter you can convert centimeters to picometers in the next step if you want to up to you but let's take that mass and then let's use the provided density, the 11.7 grams per centimeters cubed of thorium. So start with the mass in grams, divide by the 11.7 grams per centimeters cubed. And you can see how we're using the density here. So this is the density to convert the mass to a volume. And you can just stop there if you want and just do the volume in centimeters cubed. That's okay with me. But I'm on a roll. Let's just get it to picometers cubed because I need the radius in picometers. So I got centimeters cubed here. Well, there's a, this is just the inverse of what we did on the other problem. 100 centimeters per meter. Make sure you cube that entire conversion factor. This is why I like parentheses and not railroad tracks and X's and stuff. That way you can cube those conversion factors. And then there's 1 trillion or 1 times 10 to the 12 picometers per meter. Make sure you cube that. So centimeters cubed cancels centimeters cubed. Meters cubed cancels meters cubed, giving you picometers cubed. Make sure you cube the 100. Make sure you cube the 1 times 10 to the 12th in this scenario. So in picometers, this would give you to three significant figures from the density. 1.3173 times 10 to the 8th picometers cubed. Good to three sig figs. And if you'd done that in centimeters, that would be a really tiny number because you wouldn't have the cubed trillion there. <laughs> 10 to the 12th. All right, let's move on to steps 3 and 4. So now that I've got the volume... I can calculate the edge length just by taking the cubed root of that. And then in step four, we can relate the edge length L to the atomic radius for an FCC unit cell if you do the Pythagorean theorem properly. Go ahead and do steps three and four for me. Almost done. All right, so edge length, this is probably the easiest step. We know volume is the edge length cubed. Well, we happen to know the volume. So edge length, take the cube root of both sides or the one-third power, whatever you like to do in your calculator. So um, so the length would be the volume to the one-third power or the cube root, right? Pick your poison, I don't care, you get the same answer. So let's take the volume that we had calculated in step two, 1.3173 times 10 to the eighth picometers cubed. Take that to the one-third power or, again, the cube root. And I get five to three significant figures, 508.49 picometers. Okay, good to three sig figs. Now, if you'd done everything in centimeters, right, 
that would be in centimeters, and then you'd have to convert that to picometers. You know, right? That conversion's whenever you could do that in step two or step three, doesn't matter. Now that we know the uh, edge length, we need to relate that to the atomic radius, and that's based on the unit cell. That's different for BCC, simple cubic, hexagonal closest packed, face center cubic, which is also cubic closest packed, right? So I could have asked you this question a little bit differently. Instead of telling you that uh, this particular metal, what was it, thorium, was face center cubic, I could have said it has a cubic closest packed structure. CCP, and you have to realize, well, cubic closest packed is actually a face-centered cubic um, arrangement, right? Got to know that stuff, right? The closest packing, right, depending if you have the A, B, A, B, A, B for the hexagonal closest pack or the A, B, C, A, B, C, A, B, C for the cubic closest pack, which if you rotate in a funky way shows you an FCC unit cell. All right, so from an FCC unit cell, this is the face, right? For the body-centered cubic, the, the four radius is across the body diagonal. For the face-centered cubic, it's the face diagonal. So I think it's a little bit easier. We only have to do the Pythagorean theorem once rather than twice. So we have the edge length across the bottom of the triangle, which is L. So A would be L. The edge length across the top right, so the B would also be L, A, B, C. And then the diagonal C would be R plus R plus R plus R, right? You've got the face with the two radius and then the corner, corner. So four times the radius equals C. So we need to figure out what that is. So from the Pythagorean theorem, A squared plus B squared equals C squared for our right triangle, yay. So A is L, so that'd be L squared. B is also L, that would be L squared, and C is 4R, so we square the 4R. I've already solved this on a prior video, so if you do all the, all the math, you'll end up with the edge length is equal to R times the square root of eight, right? Therefore, the radius would be the, the edge length L divided by the square root of 8, because we're after the atomic radius. And so let's take our edge length of 508.49 picometers uh, and then divide that by the square root of 8. So we're limited to the three significant figures here. I get 179.77 picometers, which rounds up to 180 picometers. Now, in chemistry, you need that naked decimal to make that trail. Without it, that trailing zero wouldn't be significant, and you'd have two significant digits. <gasps> So chemists like to use that, what's called a naked decimal, there's nothing after it, to make that trailing zero significant. So 180 picometers with a naked decimal of three sig figs. That's how you do it. Four steps to calculate density, provided uh, atomic radius and the type of unit cell. Four steps to calculate the atomic radius, provided the density or the unit cell type. We got it! We put it all together in one nice sandwich. <gasps> sandwich sounds good. It's lunchtime. Bye, guys!